So what I would be talking is basically just to uh, give a little bit of uh, how a quant guy mindset works when it looks after, when it looks at the open, high, low, close and volume of a Sensex or any index. <coughs> just a brief introduction about me. So actually that's my LinkedIn uh, profile, you can search for Cora Reddy. <coughs> I'm actually the author of this book, uh, wrote about like three years ago. Uh, it just gives you a glimpse of uh, how to approach for quantitative trading patterns or whatever. <coughs> and uh, currently I am a co-founder of a startup company in US which is basically the past stat, which gives you the quantitative screeners. So this is briefly what I would be talking, so I will just uh, briefly give a 15 or 20 minutes introduction of what uh, are the various parameters into the backtesting and what should you be looking at uh, when you are trying to backtest any uh, pattern or any trading strategy. <coughs> and it's, it's little, uh, I won't say it's uh, difficult, but it's impossible to track all the patterns that what goes in every mind. So it's just like, I would try to give you like few uh, ideas so that you can build uh, based on top of them. <coughs> and perhaps some like few patterns if we have like time or whatever that I could operate on Excel sheet and then show whatever the current, some of the edges that I uh, try to fiddle and play with on a day to day basis. And that's basically the motto, so you just like try to feed the brain so that the people will uh, pick up their own way of looking at the patterns, like give a man a fish and you feed him for a day but if you teach him how to fish, he can, <coughs> you are feeding him for a lifetime. <coughs> this is the, <coughs> <coughs> the basic question like which, uh, like I mean at least for me that, that's the question that's when I entered into this testing or quantitative world. So this is, I don't know how many people have heard this name called Victor Niederhofer and he writes a uh, couple of books, one is The Education of Speculator and the second edition or whatever the extension to that is uh, Practical Speculation. And both the books, the theme is, okay, have you tested that? Whatever anybody talks, you would be seeing most of the people on TV or in your circle or anybody saying, oh, the market is now about 200 day moving average or it's uh, fallen like 1% or so many theories like RSI now is above 70, it's like overbought. These are all theories but have you tested and then seen what is going to happen the next? Like whenever RSI is greater than 70 or whenever the market is above 200 day moving average, what's your uh, probabilities for the next day? So that's the premise, Look, have you tested whatever the hypothesis that you want to, uh, whatever you are like looking at, at the current market condition? And most of the times, uh, I don't use a high uh, fancy software like like very, uh, what do you call it, the complex technical indicators which, which basically even uh, the author of the indicator himself wouldn't have known, okay, what are the steps to do it. For example, uh, I'm like, I don't know how many people can calculate ADX by hand. How many people here can calculate ADX by hand? ADX period 14, if I give like 28 points you can calculate by hand, ADX. Yeah, so I, I don't use the, the complex uh, technical indicators uh, like that which basically requires uh, uh, so many uh, loops or whatever, that complex calculation. The reason for that is uh, whenever I look for a patterns, I don't want to write probably like five or six lines of code or I like, want to be as simple as possible and uh, try to find. And that's one of the reasons that I use Excel because I know exactly what I'm trying to do, uh, not somebody else uh, proprietary indicator or like complex indicators which he, uh, which I don't understand why it is uh, developed or what is the philosophy that it is developed with. Okay, when uh, doing uh, any of the back testing, so these are like very simple and uh, 
uh, the most important factors that I look for. Of course, beyond this, I also look for so many other factors, but uh, th these are like, okay, something to start with. These are like sufficient uh, whenever you are uh, doing any back test. One is uh, the number of years analyzed. Uh, this is, again, so any of these theories, especially in the stock market, there is always a fur argument and against argument that that's, that's the, the theory in the stock market unlike in any other uh, educational fields. Uh, something like doctor if, okay, you have a fever, okay, take paracetamol, that's it. Uh, all the doctors will say the same thing. Whereas if you go into the market, okay, that, that's how it worked, but disclaimer, it may not work or whatever. So every topic has or every statement that you make has a pro and con. So coming to the number of years analyzed, yeah, preferably uh, for uh, indices or if I'm looking or uh, trading at the index, I at least want like 10 years of data and preferably like a cycle, uh, again at least in the ret ret retrospective basis like uh, up cycle or down cycle. So Indian markets do fit that and of course because of this 2008, 2000 burst and again up and again 2000 eight burst and now again the current up. So you like get two cycles in most of the international markets. <coughs> so yeah, I mean, if you go back, like 10 years is what I prefer. And when it comes to the stocks or something like that, okay, I look for the recent uh, regime or like, preferably I try to keep it as short as possible. Something like four years is what I prefer when it comes to back testing on the stocks. And the second thing is percentage of uh, winning trades. This is uh, <coughs> it just like your uh, comfort factor. I mean, so especially when I'm in a short-term trading where my positions are held only for a day or two or at max five days, I want that number to be as high as possible uh, because, uh, I mean, it, it's, it's not only the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the capital required or whatever and also the confidence and the money that I can churn in and out because I would be placing more and more trades. Whereas the trend followers, they can get away even like, let's say even 30% or 40% of the winning uh, trades. But when you are like highly leveraged, uh, you, you cannot get away because let's say you hit a stream of 15 losses or 20 losses when you are doing that. Uh, so that, that's the reason I prefer my percentage of winning trades to be at least 75% or 70% plus because I'm like looking at like one.